So as many of you know, um, almost probably everyone in this room knows, there are a few new faces that I've never seen before. Can you speak a little louder, please? Um, louder? Yeah, I said most of you uh, in this room know. There are a few faces, though, that uh, are new here to me that I've never seen before. But um, three and a half years ago, um, I um, came to Northfield Township and Whitmore Lake with my wife um, from Chicago. Um, I applied for a position uh, for township manager and uh, was lucky enough to be chosen to lead this community into its next iteration of township structure and government. Um, the Biltmore proposal uh, certainly came um, before you in the beginning of my tenure here in Northfield Township and as many of you know through uh, significant uh, uh, conversations and dialogue and even FOIA requests uh, there's no question that uh, David and I had conversations early on uh, and I was certainly part of that process. Um, What I would like to say to you is that I still stand here three and a half years later today and say that what uh, happened in this community and the work that I did and the administrative staff sort of responsibility that I led in that process, I still agree that it was the right thing. Um, a developer came forth um, and provided an opportunity um, and that opportunity was brought forth to the Planning Commission and the Town uh, Board of Trustees. Sorry, I was going to say Town Council. Uh, Mr. Stolman was made abundantly aware that there was a significant divide in this community. One of individuals who wanted to see growth happen and one of individuals who didn't. And I think that Moving forward, I'm going to get to the point of my diatribe here in a little bit. I think that moving forward, there are some issues that have been identified over this two and a half to three year long conflict that exists, existed in the community that really do, in fact, need to be discussed. Um, I have, over the years, tried to have some of those conversations with people privately. I have had those conversations sometimes quietly in public. Uh, by saying that there are certainly market forces and market dynamics that are at play in Northfield Township and in Whitmore Lake that need to be addressed and reviewed in context with planning and zoning. It's not to say that market forces and market dynamics should be the only factor in the planning process, but it should be noted it should be understood by the Planning Commission members and by the elected officials before decisions are made. It's one thing to come up with a beautiful vision of a community, of an area, of a plot of land. It's another thing to recognize whether or not the market forces will allow that vision to be realized. Oftentimes there is a gap between the vision and the market realities. What's important to understand is that the master plan document should represent the wishes of the residents, the res certainly the wishes of the appointed and elected officials, which should be a reflection of the wishes of the residents. But before any decision is made on any zoning, in any master plan amendment, in any vision for your community, ask the critical questions of market forces and market dynamics. It's not to say that we pander to the developer. It's not to say that we create regulations, make decisions based on what is financially most feasible. It's to say we should have that information. I think one of the flaws of the process many, many years ago, which I was not a part of, grant you, so I'm speaking a bit with, at a, uh, with a grain of salt, but I, in talking with many, many people 
in this community, people that were on the Planning Commission back then, current elected and appointed officials, those understandings were really not present by the individuals that were creating those and making those decisions. I think that you've got a good master plan because I think that the community supports it. The residents have spoken and I'm glad that the Planning Commission has, uh, has provided a decision that is in conformance with the residents because that's what a master plan is. But moving forward, it would be helpful to the debate and to the conflict to have a conversation about what is realistic. What is potentially the gap, if you will, between what is vision and what is market realities? And what can we do to close that gap? Lastly, I want to apologize to the community. Three and a half years ago, I came to Northfield Township and there was no question that there were many people in this community that I heard from that wanted growth. They wanted opportunity to be present. They wanted the businesses in the community to thrive. What I would like to personally apologize for is not having a better understanding of the opinions and the um, and the not values, um, not having a better understanding of the opinions, the passion surrounding it, and the resident's desire for what the vision of the community is. Values is a term that defines necessarily good or bad. Vision is a, term, is a, is a, is a word that defines what you want. The reality is there is no right or wrong on either side of this debate. There is a vision that people have requested. And I, my apology to the community is not having a better understanding of that vision and not having to have communicated that vision during the early days of that process. Um, that is all. Thank you, Mr. Fink. Mr. Fink, Mr. Mr. Fink did you? If I may, just one or two more minutes. Go ahead, and then Ms. Chuck. I, or I, Ms. I, Chick. The end. I'm sorry. Are, are we, are, I just have a clarification. Are we in the board member comments? Because we could easily do the minutes and then go into board member comments so we follow our agenda. We are not at this point in time. After the vote that took place, Mr. Fink asked for the floor. I made a discretionary decision to give him the floor. Upon him uh, making a statement, the board always has the ability to respond in some way. That's where we are at right now. Once Mr. Fink has made a statement and Ms. Chick has her opportunity to respond, uh, if there's no other comments from planning commissioners, we will move on to new business. Go ahead, Mr. Fink. Thank you. Real quick. Um, two two um, points that I would like to make. Um, there's no question that I have certainly been um, the... I have certainly received a significant uh, brunt of criticism uh, of which um, is, uh, is, um, is, is the right of the community and the residents to do so. I am an individual that is uh, put in the public eye and uh, a public, in some ways, a public official and there's certainly um, uh, uh, that criticism is, um, is part of democracy. Um, I will say that when we first got here at this beginning of this process, there was a really, really strong support for growth in this community. And I do want to remind everyone in the, in the, in the audience that remembers back to the original days of this application that there was a 14 to nothing vote to hear this master plan amendment by the Board of Trustees and the Planning Commission. Um, I, I still stand behind my apology for not really understanding the sentiments of the community. Um, the, the
the last thing I want to say is I, I 100% agree with Mr. Stan Lynchko. Throughout this whole process, I was very, very deeply frustrated and deeply concerned um, and tried to voice those concerns uh, both privately and at times in a way that was uh, politically correct publicly as well, although I didn't do it very forcefully, that this process was way too long. And that for some reason or another, there was not a discussion that really occurred. There was a lot of people talking to each other, a lot of people criticizing, and a lot of people reacting back. There was a lot of that going on, but there was really never a good conversation to happen. And again, I take some responsibility for that as well. Um, at the end of the day, I'm the township manager and process uh, uh, is part of my purview. And um, I, next time this happens, I'm not gonna let that occur. Whether it's a planning commission consultants or uh, planning commission members or officials, the process needs to be a dialogue between the community and the elected and represented officials. And here we are two and a half years later, um, and we're hearing the, making the decision on this uh, report. And I know that there are a number of people in this community that were really hurt by the fact that there wasn't a better dialogue that was going on, that there wasn't a, a, a deeper conversation. So anyway, Thank you, Mr. for Fink. what it's worth, whether it's politically correct or not, those are my comments. Thank you, Mr. Fink. I should say this, that Pat doesn't have a mink coat. But she does have a respectable Republican cloth coat. And I always tell her that she'd look good in anything. One other thing I probably should tell you, because if I don't, they'll probably be saying this about me too. We did get something to get after the election. A man down in Texas heard Pat on the radio mention the fact that our two youngsters would like to have a dog. And believe it or not, the day before we left on this campaign trip, we got a message from the Union Station in Baltimore saying they had a package for us. We went down to get it. You know what it was? It was a little cocker spaniel dog in a crate that he sent all the way from Texas. Black and white, spotted. And our little girl, Trisha, the six-year-old, named it Texas. And you know, the kids, like all kids, love the dog. And I just want to say this right now, that regardless of what they say about it, we're going to keep 